Hey class, welcome back. Mr. G here. Today we're going to be continuing with part two of our interview with Coach Hill as he goes over some awesome tips that he does with art history, some painting tips and tricks, especially for the teachers there, and also some tech in art class. What first, uh, good to see you. I mean, we haven't seen each other since I, mean, I know. Like when, when was the last time we actually had a meeting where we actually could sit down? This is so weird. Just not, yeah. not do you think that doing something like this often would be beneficial to us, not only as um, creatures of collaboration, we have to talk to one another in general, yeah. but I think that it that professionally it helps us, but also mentally, is that going to help us? especially with especially yes it would and especially with this whole concept of them wanting us to collaboratively plan or collaborate with with people and then the number of schools that only have one of you in the building it's like you look around like who do i collaborate with <laughs> and I'm, i was going to ask this later but i think this is more important now is um do you think that doing this once a week or doing this for these collaborative sessions is this going to change how we teach for the future i think it is um because i'd rather teach in person like and my whole issue with the county is i don't feel that they're doing enough to make sure we can do that effectively by by where where certain schools are you know, it's not cookie cutter. So, so, but I, I would rather teach in person, but there's a lot of things coming out of this that I'm going to keep doing, even if everything becomes quote unquote normal again. Do, are these things that you're going to keep, are these like your personal hacks that you've kind of evolved over this time frame, or what do you, um, I was going to because that was another question I was going to say, what is your personal hack that you've kind of evolved and dealt and d dived into more doing this kind of teaching? Um, one was uh, just how I deliver the lesson information. I think I'm going to be way more paperless um, going forward. Like I said, even if things are normal, um, even if I had to make sure that I package it in a way where it's a PDF so it's easily accessible, even if it's on a kid's phone, just staying away from the copier as much as possible now. <laughs> I I think we all, we, we always had a, a hate love relationship with our copiers in general, mm -hmm. but, and I always think it's always more interesting when the art people are always like, we're going to go paperless. Because that's such a non-common thing, um, but yeah, I'm with you on the I, I. The less I can do on paper and more virtual, I am happier. Yeah, and that and um, and it's allowed me to do more because I didn't have to worry about making copies of this and stuff like that, or worrying about students writing stuff down, all that, all that kind of stuff. It's allowed me to do more art history stuff. I, I definitely want to dive into that with you um, because that's one thing I'm, I will absolutely admit I am horrible on art history. Like I do like, I touch base on it and I was having this conversation with uh, last week with another teacher and I, I put it in kind of two camps where you have the production people where we we make art we just make art that is what we do on the commonality and we talk about our history like we use them as reference points it's like we want you to guys to see this you want you to do this and then you have the other end of the spectrum which is this is our textbook we're going to study the textbook and then it's it's very you know professor snape turn to page 934 and do this art history lesson i'm like i don't get that that does not make sense to me we we're both production people how do you approach our history all right I, I i approach it a number of different ways um one way is um introducing the students to artists is 
has been easier virtually. Uh, one thing I, I do um, once a week, especially on this Wednesday, asynchronous day, I do what's called Arts by Coachella. So I set up a Google Slides um, almost like it would look like an Instagram page. And I'll have a few works of art, like like if you look on your, your main page and you see in, in, in the screen, you might see the, la the, the last six things you posted. So there'll be some artworks there with hyperlinks for more information about the artwork or the artist. And then the next slide will have the artwork I want them to look at that week. And then the next slide will have a place where they can make a brief comment about the art, you know, pushing them to use artistic language, like the elements and principles when they're making their comment. But their comment would be more in the format of how they would leave a comment on Instagram. So instead of their Instagram name, they would say, so instead of their Instagram name, it would be at David Hill and then their comment. And then I, I, I make it for, for that class. I'll make it um, anyone can edit so that everybody can see what everybody comment. And you're doing this on what platform? Google Slides. OK, I love that. I know I'm at least on three. I don't because yeah. I see you're in my feed all the time. You post all <laughs> the time. <man. laughs> and then the other thing I've been trying to do with not only my students, but other people was posting um, a black artist a day for Black History Month. Yeah, I, I, the last couple, I want to do a piece on the photographer that you did. I think that was that was early on. That was yeah. like one of the first ones you did. His work was phenomenal. Yeah, I love I love seeing his stuff. And, um, yeah, and then the, the way I decided to, it kind of came to my mind was, you know how everybody posts something during Black History Month, but a lot of times it's always inventors or civil rights people and stuff like that you know i wanted to make sure i did something for the artist and i figured you know and then sometimes it just comes to me what who do i want to do that day it'll be a range of uh past people people working now and then like i have a lot of students that are really doing some great stuff in the arts now and so i kind of even do future people that you know hopefully their work will really take on and then they'll become legends in the future or something like that. And that's highly important. I mean, not only for the kids to have to yeah. kind of boost themselves, uh, but then your students who you're teaching, it's like, oh, they they came to this school. This is yeah, this is somebody who I can walk in their footsteps. I got, I got a former I got a former student. He's one of my very first AP students back in 08. And a lot of the graphics you would see on NBC Sports during soccer and football season, he was on the team responsible for creating them. Man, just the, yeah. the level we and I, I mean, I do say Atlanta a lot. So people know that we're from Atlanta, but the I think the grasp on how much Atlanta has come into its own to really combat with California now. Yeah. Of, of just the arts and how much the arts is an integration. But we're still so backwards here that we don't understand the, the true financial uh, availability that we have just because of, you know, we're surrounded by the farms and the, the southern mentality. And I, and I think that's more of a detriment. But um, but the, the and then going back to the art, the um, Black History Month stuff, I think that it also becomes more paramount the more that we do it in like it's becoming more common in commonplace in schools. It's like, yes, let's put in a black inventor. Let's do um, somebody from civil rights. And you you do get a couple artists, but it's always the same ones. It's always Faith yep. Ringgold, Jacob Lawrence, Biscott. These are like. And, yeah, and that was my other thing. I'm gonna throw out some people. I'm gonna throw out some, I guess, universally known, but I'm also gonna throw some curveballs. And then again, with former students or people, active artists working now, that you may not know. Yeah, that was my whole plan, too. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love it. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, because I've been like I've been evolving. How to instruct virtually since. Since we started this. Um, in August, like and this. It's been it's been so stressful sometimes. 
Oh, I know. It's just been, there's never been a cohesive plan. And there's never been a um, definitive, this is what we really got to, what we really have to accomplish. That that post has been moving the entire yeah. time. And then even with them, quote unquote, trying to find resources to help teachers do it, nothing fits me. Yeah. So I'm like, y'all keep saying this, but it's not fitting me. Like, because I don't feel comfortable being able to deliver what the students have got accustomed to because I don't think I'll have the technology in the building to do it. A hundred percent. And so it was, so he was like, so and I told him, he, and then he just seemed so perplexed. Like, why doesn't the principal know this? Year in and year out, even in person, I've done this. And it's like, it's like he's like, so how have you managed before? I was like, uh, when we were in person, it works a little. The, the laws don't seem as big because the students are interacting with each other and stuff like that as you're transitioning through the classes when everybody's in the same room. I said, but yeah, I said, I've been thinking uh, some days I feel like I'm a DJ switching from turntable to turntable. Yep. <laughs> like I went I went a whole half of first semester. Before one student realized that I was teaching more than one class during this, he's like, wait a minute. He said, you got more than one class? I said, yes, where have you been? He said, man, he said, <laughs> that's why if it's, if it's general an announcement for everybody, I say, this is for everybody. I'm speaking to a specific class. I announced the name of that course. <laughs> yep. And it's just, it's it's it, it's been difficult, but you know I've I've every time tried to evolve. See what can I do better? Because at first I started out presenting the lessons I think as uh, PDFs or Word docs. And then I I moved to Google Slides and then some other other ways to present the lessons. And then just that week weekend and weekend out of doing these slide presentations like. And they what the what the other core some of the other core classes and some of the other teachers don't realize virtually we got to do a whole lot more prep work than we had to do in person. Yes, a thousand percent. Yes. Even when it comes to demos, you could wait to do your demo a lot of times in the flow of class when you're in person, even setting it up. But virtually, sometimes you got to either have part of the demo done or at least an example already done especially it's a little bit better this semester because we got the longer time but especially when it was like the 30 minute window and it's like i ain't gonna have enough the, the demo would take the whole 30 minutes yep. <laughs> like i said the other thing I, and i can send you uh or i'll drop in that google classroom my format for the arts by Coachella, but yeah, you know, it's just, like I said, this has helped, like there's a lot of things that I got out of this. The teaching aspect has been frustrating, but there's a lot of other things that I've gotten out of this that I'm going to do going forward in some fashion. Like I said, as far as disseminating information to the kids, um, a lot of times, even how I may have them submit work, because there's always been that um that tug and pull for students especially if they do something really cool i said well let me hold on to it to the end of the semester because you know i do my end of the semester display yep. you know and then sometimes depending on how the school decides to close out the semester you don't get to connect with that student to give the work back to them and it's like uh so you know even with how they submit work it may still like i still may end up taking physical work but um and I may I may only end up taking physical work that I may want to either display or hang up. But for the populace, I may still require them to do it digitally because if the work isn't up to par, then this way I don't have to worry about holding on to it or if the student decides to trash it themselves. At least I still got the image for grading and record keeping and stuff like that. 
So, and just like I said, the whole the whole art history piece, finding different ways and art criticism too, finding different ways to get the kids to talk about art in different ways um, has been good too. So there's some, and that just make my lot job a little easier because a lot of times the way we've done it, we've, you know, we created some worksheet or some doc that the kids had to fill out or some some way that you want them to design their sketchbook to do the information. But some of it uh, has been a lot easier. Thank you so much for uh, for hanging out with me today. It's been a blast. I definitely can't wait to see the next projects that you're doing. No, nah, this has been the best Wednesday ever during this school year. I felt useful. Because <laughs> even the Wednesday's home, you're like, I have office hours and I'm like, kids aren't taking advantage of them. I know they got questions. I know they don't understand, but nobody is scheduling office hour appointments with me for one-on-ones and stuff. And I'm like, other than our department meeting, which we have a blast, because uh, we all understand we're all in the same boat, the fine arts. It's like the rest of your Wednesday is just, basically you, you feel like you're sitting on hold without the music. I know. <laughs> but uh, the benefit is, is this gives us time to actually make um, because yeah, you you said that you you made more now than like any other year ever. Yeah, uh, I feel the same way. It's just, um, it, but I'm doing it solely as this. So it's like even my even my good examples are only like shoddy craft made <laughs> items as quickly as possible again, just so I can get the video done. Uh, because I know I was going to be teaching in the, in a week or two. Um, the the one thing i would love i would i would love to know if you've done this or or planning to do it just because i want to know how your kids received it um this was the end of last year so april may uh of last year i did a piece on um it was advanced collage techniques where i drew it was a picture of beast mm -hmm. from x-men and then i use magazines and like slivers of magazines to illustrate the entire painting so instead of painting it they were using magazines right. to paint in color so i had to layer different colors of blues together and whites and blacks to from a distance it looks right but when you look really close up you can see all the variants um i would love to know that from a painting perspective how how the kids received it or does that quantify that kind of uh, a lesson for that kind of class right so I've done some versions of that when we were in person with my, uh, with actually my painting class and VA too. But um, I've done some pieces like that, like when I was in like college uh, too, with just that whole thing. Uh, it it translate uh, my even before we were virtual and stuff like that. My whole working definition with my painting cast is painting is the application of color. Well, I like that. So whatever medium you use in this class, you know, when we were in person and stuff in this class, we will primarily be using what you consider traditional paint medium. But there will be times where we're doing other stuff because in this class, the working definition is learning how to apply color because the principles in most aspects, except when it comes to maybe light, are pretty much the same when you're applying color, even if you're using a different medium. You know, um, so yeah, we've done that. And then like, that's usually a lot of times one of my first assignments, not so much uh, a whole painting or a work of art, but just like, that's usually one of their first sketchbook assignments, like a, a, a collage color wheel. So, you know, you know, using finding different blues, different reds, different oranges, and arranging them in the correct order on a color wheel. You know, but yeah, I've done I've done some. I haven't done it this year, but I've done in the past similar stuff with collage, um, like that. You know, usually usually raid the media center for old magazines and stuff. I I look out. I have my dad's a lawyer. <laughs> 
So I, I, when, when he was at his office, I would just be like, hey, can you ask all the guys on the floor for their magazines? So like in one week, I would get a milk crate just slam full of magazines. Um, but yeah, that I think it makes it interesting because most kids don't think about using that as, as that kind of, a, of, of an a, a addendum anyways. Yeah. So because even with us now being virtual, you know, I tell them all the time, because we have weekly sketchbook assignments. I said, the, I said, I know some of you don't have traditional paint at the house, uh, but again, remember my definition that we're working with in this class. Your sketchbook assignments, because this is a painting class, must be in color. So whether that's crayon, marker, color pencil, color gel pens, you have to. It has to be in color. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, so, yeah. Because even with, I had to revamp my painting class just because I know like I've, I've, I've done digital, like I said, I've done digital. We've, we've started out the year digital painting there. I'm, I am working to do some traditional techniques and stuff, but I've started, I've turned painting one into a digital painting class just to make it as equitable as possible because I know everybody wouldn't have brushes. Everybody wouldn't have paint. Uh, and then if some people have paint, then you got to wonder if they got watercolor, if they got acrylic or, you know, are they working with that really preschool acrylic paint or Tim? It was like in, in person, I couldn't even, I'd have people who would never get brushes. I was like, cause I stopped a long time ago ordering brushes. I said, I order paint. I'm not ordering brushes cause I'm tired of seeing sticks in the sink. Yep. <laughs> So it was like they wouldn't even order, they wouldn't even buy their own brushes. I'm like, you can get a good quality set to function in this class from Walmart for about four bucks and change. I was like, y'all are tripping. Yep. Y'all spend four bucks and change in one shot in the vending machine. <laughs> oh, you know, I, yeah, I, I can't even, yeah, the vending machine culture is just, uh, I can't buy a brush because I need this like five dollars to buy this one soda. Like, and I'm just like, and this, and then even with those that buy brushes, I still find sticks in the sink. And I tell them, y'all, y'all are buying y'all brushes and there's sticks in the sink. Imagine how many sticks there would be if I supplied the brushes. <laughs> I was I like, know, maybe, well, maybe I should do. We should do a video on making your own brushes, and just like grabbing yarn or some other material to make the brushes from and then that that would be the first assignment that'd be cool i did i did that with my drawing class as far as making their own uh tortillions when we were in person they <laughs> I, I, what did i call it it's I always best to get that one admin who has no idea what's going on to pop in on that class <laughs> so we were so i told the kids i said we're gonna roll up the day and then some of the kids were looking at me like we gonna do what? <laughs> rolling up today, man. What you, what you, what you stressing about? They was like, you know what that mean? I'm like, do you know what that means? I'm like, <laughs> 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 so it was, it was cool. That 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 assignment was kind of cool because, you know, the kids that really got into it actually use them and stuff like that. So, hundred percent. Well, it's getting late, so I'll I'll let you go. But this is this is a blast, man. We got to do this again, definitely. Yeah. But good talking with you. Thanks for uh, hanging out today, and we'll oh, talk no again. Oh, no problem. Like I said, best use of my Wednesday since the school year started. <laughs> awesome class. I hope that you guys much information out of that interview as I did, because man, talking with with colleagues and other professionals in the art realm, it's so nice to have somebody to bounce some ideas off of and just have feedback sometimes i mean some these chats are never these chats are just one of those fun things that i love to do it's it's a great learning experience for me for you for the teacher who i usually have a talk with because we do we're doing something that's outside of our comfort zone normally and I, I, it's just fun it's just fun and don't forget to check out the description where i've got uh coach hills uh instagram for the art history and his sneaker design so definitely check his stuff out also big thank you to coach hill for coming on have a chat with me today because uh, 
it's just fun to hang out with friends. So, but definitely check out his stuff, support him, support other art teachers, get the message out there as always. Uh, so let's do, which leads us into wrapping up class. And as always, don't forget to like, subscribe, share, all the various platforms, get the message out there to as many teachers as possible. As always, if you had a question, comment, or concern, raise those hands down in the comments below. Happy to answer those questions for my classmates. As always, I will see you guys next class. Um, so until then, uh, next time we're gonna be, maybe, maybe I think it's next time, slab design with matte board so fun things on the horizon i'll see you guys next class later guys today so don't forget to like subscribe subscribe don't forget to like subscribe subscribe don't and don't forget to like share i need a nap